Here's a press approval uh, checklist that I started for a client. And so you have the order number, the date, the press, the operator, who the supervisor is, and the quality control. There's a space for each one of them to initial. And then here are some things that they might check. Here's a one that is not obvious. I have read special instructions. And that's the first thing that I want to check because it may impact other things I check. I mean, <laughs> we have to pay attention. <laughs> Is the color correct? All eight colors. Is the density for the yellow correct? And for the other process colors? Dot area. The varnish type. I have been supervising an off shift after hours. Management is not around. The work order says UV coated. But we have matte, semi gloss, high gloss, no production that night. So, in fact, I, as a manager, have my supervisor, my supervisor fill out a checklist. Before he releases this that work order to the floor, he makes sure that every single bit of information is complete on that thing before it goes to the floor, so there is no waste of time on the floor once that product gets there. And, all, and a variety of other things. Varnish coverage. Here's another one that's not obvious. Sometimes we coat, flood coat, a, right after you do all your printing, you put just a complete coat of high gloss UV, for example. You want it to have a nice, glossy shine. And lo and behold, somebody from another department comes and says, look, and every rotation, one little spot has no UV on it. So by having that on the checklist, I am prompting my operator and the supervisor to look at that carefully. When they get to that point, they say, ah, let's check that so they don't forget. So you want to incorporate any check that is important to be done in some sort of approval checklist before the job runs. Registration among colors. Blocking test. Now see, UV cured, UV block test, rub resistance, heat resistance, and GC test, gas commitment. Those are not conducted by the operator or the supervisor, so therefore they're crossed out. But the QC person is going to do that shortly after we get the job run. Start. Okay? By the way, you will receive a copy of this presentation, so you don't have to write down all of those things. Quick, quick protocol. If there was a failure of the product and it wasn't something to check on our checklist. Protocol. Operator writes down, we should check to make sure UV is complete. Initial and dated so that Anyone else knows when you wrote that out there and who it was that did that. That gets submitted to the box of the supervisor. The supervisor comes and says, I approve of that. Signed and dated. That goes uh, to production control. They revise the form. It comes back on the, on the floor. So there's a protocol. Change is OK. It must, and it's OK to empower our operators with initiating changes. But there must be a protocol adhered to. We cannot just arbitrarily change. There has to be a protocol involved. Incoming quality. If, not, if you trust your vendor, perhaps you'll do periodic spot checks of your ink. But you'll want to check its viscosity, either every time or periodically. If it's water-based ink, you want to make sure that you want to check the pH. You want to check the color. And uh, there is a device, we call it hand proofer, and there are others, where basically you have like a little rolling device with a little analog roll on it and a rubber roll, right? You can put a drop of ink on it, and draw it down, and measure the ink. Even if, even if the, the, the analog roll does not correlate to one you're going to use with the amount press, with this hand proofer, when the ink comes in, you can have a standard that you've retained, that you manage. And you put a drop of that standard on one part of that proofer, 
a drop of what just come, came in on the other side, you draw those two down together, and you can compare those two. You can do that by eye, you can do it with an instrument. And so that's a way you can verify the color that, that uh, as it comes in. And the, the, the quality of that standard must be carefully maintained. It has a limited shelf life. At some point, you'll want to replace it, so you'll replace it with an ink that matches it. Uh, you want to cooperate with your ink vendor. Many ink suppliers uh, incorporate on their label these uh, values we call LAB values. And basically, if the LAB values, uh, uh, you know, and uh, on that label, you will see what your target color is graphically and where this new batch of ink falls relative to that target because everything is electronically stored. So the label prints on a, a, a cross. The center represents what was established as the standard color. And then somewhere about that center, there will be a little dot that tells you where the new ink fell relative to the target. And, the, and that distance, if it's too great, the color is off. If it's within a certain distance, you're OK. Um, and that's that Delta E versus target. And you want to document and audit. Okay? You want to periodically audit to make sure that those labels are coming in accurately, are coming in the way you want it. And you want to document this. And you might say it came in delta E, which is how different the color is from what you're shooting for. And you can actually track this and see how, how your, your supplier is conforming. Might not be worth your time if, if they're doing a good job, but you can do that. So properties to control. The viscosity, pH, solvent ratios, and this is a laundry list. So you can get an appreciation of it. The solvent ratios initial blend, you want to make sure you have the right initial blend. And when you add subsequent, you want to make sure you're adding the appropriate blend. The temperature, that's one that, you know, in my experience, most people do not control ink temperature. But temperature affects color reproduction. It affects the viscosity. Okay? Uh, and miscellaneous additive content. You want to control how much catalyst you add to an ink. You want to control the foamer and anti-foam. Okay? 